Hi there everybody, it's UK independent demonstrator Halsey here from slimandstylish.com. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be using my punches and a load of scrap DSP to create different affected colors. I'm just going to pop onto YouTube so I can see who's with us and chat along with you all. Hopefully you've had a really lovely weekend and if you're joining us from the States, good morning rather than good afternoon. Aha, I'm live. YouTube's asking me to ask, answer a survey before I go in, so let's have a look. Hiya Karen, hope you're okay. I'm all on now, I can see the comments and everything else. So today I'm going to be playing with my punches. I've got two punches, the tailored tag punch and the postage stamp punch to create some really cool effect and really, really simple cards. Hi, Audrey. This started, this project started because I was in a bad mood. <laughs> I'll tell you all about my bad mood as we go through. And as I was in a bad mood, I turned around and all of my DSP just fell out the wallet that I keep it in and all the scraps went everywhere and I thought, you know what, I'm fed up with this, I'm going to use my scraps. So that's exactly how this project started. And this one here is the DSP from the annual catalogue and it coordinates with the Beautiful World stamp set. I haven't used the Beautiful World stamp set, I have simply used the Arrange Your Wreath stamp set. So this is from the annual catalogue as well. And I love the font of the words and I love this best wishes loads. So um, I've used that one and I've used that stamp on all the cards. So this, like I said, is from with the Beautiful World stamp set. It's with that suite. Oh, and the foil is actually the brushed foil that's in the Christmas catalogue. Um, this one here is the Beautiful Autumn paper from the winter catalogue which has got a lovely sheen all the way through it and again the foil is that brushed cardstock and then this one here was using pampered pets and I've used the DSP with that and then this here was the red and green foil cardstock that's also in the uh, mini catalogue and I've changed and switched and swatched them as to whether I've gone with the postage stamp background or the um, tailored tag so long as it's a symmetrical type punch that you can you can tile that's fine I did think afterwards after I put the announcement out saying bring a symmetrical punch I thought I bet someone brings a circle punch <laughs> I don't think that would be uh, it wouldn't go as well you'd have lots of gaps in the circles but there we go so those are my cards uh, who's on? Hi, Niki. Hope you're okay. Hi, Donna. Hi, Belinda. Oh, <laughs> how I handle bad moods. <laughs> I play with the punches. Honestly, there is nothing better than getting rid of bad mood than doing this like 10 times. It's pretty, it's pretty good. <laughs> Audrey's telling me ladies don't do bad moods. Wow. You, you should see what I've done today. I've been so, um, what's it called? Organised, maybe. Anyway, I will start on this and I'll talk you through what's been happening. So, to start off with, the ones I'm going to replicate today are going to be these two because I've now run out of pampered pets paper. <laughs> So it's going to be these two and it's any sort of scraps you've got so like I have scraps like this where I've used them for cards and I don't really know what I'm going to be doing with the rest of them now and they just sit in a wallet and they fall out everywhere so this is the best way to get rid of them I think so you want your scraps you also want a piece of coordinating card base so I'm using very vanilla because I haven't used very vanilla for ages and I get ever so excited when I can use very vanilla I'm normally a whisper white gal so this is nine and a half centimeters by 13.85 centimeters and for everybody in America that is three and three quarters of an inch by 
five and three eighths of an inch. Okay, and then I've got some bases. So for this one, I used a basic gray base. So you can see that just at the back there. And that was cut at 10.2 centimeters by 14.5 centimeters, which is spot on four inches. That's pretty good by five and five eighths of an inch. And then for this one here, I use crumb cut, uh, crumb cake. Um, yeah, same. <laughs> I was trying to work out the, the centimeters, but it's exactly the same as what the basic gray is. And then I've also got some very vanilla thick cardstock, which is a piece of A4 that I've cut in half. And then I've also scored it in half so that I can bend it quite nicely. And let's get going. It is really simple this. I will mention you need a load of dimensionals, lots of them. And it's helpful if you have the corner pieces as well. So um, I've still got one corner piece on this one because you do have some little bits to pop on. All right. So, oh, I've also got, oh, I forgot to mention that actually. I will mention that. The, um, this one here, which is using the um, Beautiful Autumn, the papers that come with the Beautiful Autumn Suite, that has this paper, which I didn't use because we're not really very, I'm not very a pumpkin person. But on the other side, it has this lovely paper that looks like it's just been splattered with early espresso ink. And I popped that in the center of this card. Um, I know you can't really see it, and that's why I didn't want to put a foil paper in the middle. So um, I popped that in there and thought it went quite well with the colours. Oh, yes, Cindy. A good, a good punching session that can cheer, cheer me up. So for this one, oh, yeah, and that's strange. And I don't know if you can see it very well on your thing. I'm going to keep talking. <laughs> this, this. And this is all punched from the same brush card stuck one, two, three. But it looks really different. This looks a lot lighter than those two. And I just wanted to prove to you that it's actually the same, same scraps. So I'm going to punch out two of the tailored tags and I'm going to go on the skew if so I can get the most out of the card stock. And I'm also going to cut out one of the postage label stamps for the sentiment. But if you were, um, if you only had the one punch, that's why I mixed and matched so I could show you. You could actually put this sentiment over there and this sentiment over there and only use the one punch if you've only got the one. Okay. And then for the rest, it's all the tailored tag punch on this card. And you can go whichever way you want on this paper. It's very nice when you've got paper that can go in any direction. So I'm just going to cut me two out because I've only used two full ones and I'm going to keep the, uh, the scrap. And then for this one, you don't want your worlds or your globes to be sideways. You want them to be the correct way. So I'm just going to chop and chop that. One. I had this problem with the pampered pets. So here, this one, I don't know whether you can really see the paws are sideways. It was because I never thought of the way I was going to put the paper and the paper should have been that way. <laughs> you know, it was it was going that way, but obviously the punch wanted it to go that way. So that's why I hid it with the label. Shh, I didn't tell you that I'd done that. That's my secret. <laughs> and one of those for 
for the middle. And I'm going to save punching this one to the last when I can see exactly what I want out of it. So to get started, I'm going to line this up in the centre of my grid paper so that I can see where the thick line is. That's how I found it the easiest to do. And grab my dimensionals. And I'm going to pop them onto this punch. You'll notice I've put it down the bottom, not at the top, because I'm just going to sit this over the edge of the paper. Only slight, but about that much. Hiya, Karen. Hope you're OK. Yay to get it online. And then you can pick two, so it's either one that you want. I'm going to go with these two. I'm going to keep it the same. And you just want to tie it. So it's just, just underneath and just to the side. So that when this one comes in just underneath and just to the side, you're going to have the same gap. Now I've popped them onto um, dimensionals purely because I like them standing up from the background. I think it adds some fun when you see the card. It's a bit like the floating cards we did last week. You can, if you don't have dimensionals, stick them flat. Or if you wanted to really, you know, play with everyone's eyes, you could stick every other line flat and every other line up so it looked at different levels. I'm going to keep it up on dimensionals because I like to be quite consistent. Um, Cindy, how did you make the decision to start at the top and not the middle of the card? Ah, oh, oh, yeah, probably should explain that. I'm really bad at judging where the middle of the card is. And I didn't have my ruler to measure it and put myself a little dot. And my eyes are very bad at following the lines across. So basically, my own inefficiency told me that I needed to start at the top. So what I actually did was when I had my piece of paper, I lay my punches out. It doesn't matter which order because this is just obviously a draft. And I just lay them out like that. And obviously with one more and then moved them to where I knew they wanted to be. And then I eyed up what was over at the top and then worked my way down. So yeah, that's why I did it. Um, and then with this one here, I again started at the top, but I had already put four of these on the card to work out where they needed to go and worked it that way. So I popped them on loosely first and then could maneuver them whichever way and then start at the top. And then the reason why I like starting at the top is when I've lined this up on my grid paper, so I know it's completely straight, I've got the dark line that I could line with the top of my punch, basically. That's a good question, I should have, I should have said that. But yeah, my eyes are dodgy at the best of times. And then just keep going you want to keep to the center so keep on that center line and I'm using two dimensionals per per punch out Okay, it doesn't matter that it's going to hang off the card because in the end you're going to come along and just snip those off. And you can see when I get to the end, this here is just going to hang over the edge again. Now, 
it's up to you when you make yours as well. You don't have to. Um, you could have had this one up here, this one here. You don't have. You could have it any which way you wanted to. And if, of course, you've only got certain numbers of cardstock or only little bits, then obviously you can have lots of different tailored tag punch outs. But I quite liked them looking symmetrical. Symmetrical. And then my mastery of the English language also had real fun in trying to work out how to spell that when I tried to put symmetrical punch up. So, and then like I said, you're just going to come along and chop. It doesn't matter that there's a dimensional half hanging off, just chop through it. My YouTube telling me I'm live. <laughs> if you heard that ring, we know YouTube. So that's sort of the skeleton of the card, and you could leave it that way. Like if you're going to put a sentiment across the middle, that would might would look quite nice. But um, I'm going to fill in the gaps, and I'm going to fill the gaps in with this one here. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to punch out two. And for anyone who's watching in France, and I don't think we've got anyone from France on, I'm actually punching through France. Okay. Now with this one, actually you wanted to punch out three. Once you've lined it up and you're gonna chop it off, you're gonna use the other half over this side. So I'm just going to cut them in half now before I stick them, just to find it easier. And you want to use the other half because that way you know it's still going to be up the right way. If you if I'd only cut one, for instance, there's my one, and I use that one there and that one there, then my writing is going to be the wrong way around and France would be upside down. So I'm making sure my writing is the right way and then I'm just going to punch that other one out. Oh, this one's Switzerland. There we go. So this is where, no, this one you're okay with full dimensionals. It's these top bits here that you want the half dimensionals. And I'm just gonna stick the dimensional directly onto the cardstock. Oh, if I can get it off my fingers. And stick all of those down. The great thing about popping these up on dimensionals, I know I said you can do them flat and you can, but when they're up on dimensionals, you get the shadow underneath them where the light is. I just think that looks really nice on the background. I'm just chopping all of those off. Okay. 
I mean, you can keep these as well and do a um, like a little chopped one, but that's too fiddly for me. I just <laughs> I'm not a not a fiddly fiddly girl. If they're li if they're little like this, I'll throw them in the bin. But if they're big, sort of like the strips I had at the start, or like this, I will keep them. And then that's when all my paper stash gets messy. So use my little half dimensionals, and that one's a quarter because I I chopped a bit too quick and chopped. A quarter um belinda is designing christmas cards in her head as she's watching me oh using this this sort of technique i was actually with this one here i was so close i had this as a scrap um from the christmas catalog you know the foil that's got all the menus and things on i was going to put it with this red but pampered pets one I've just got so many scrap pieces of DSP. Don't I? Yeah, it is a great way of using up scraps. Do you know what else it is? Um, it's a really good way of demonstrating your DSP as well. So uh, Donna is also a demonstrator, taffy crafting. But yeah, I found that I'm just trying to work out which way my globes are because my globes are going to come in at the top. That's where they should be. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to run that exactly up to that one. And I don't need a full full bit because it's only going like that. So I'm just going to cut myself another piece. Saves wasting lots of lots of DSP. Not there's not much of that left. But yes, um, when there's a new catalogue or a new suite and I'm unsure if customers can see all of the cards and all of the papers that come in that suite, this is a really good idea to do, to send them so that they've got a sample of every piece, every sheet that's in that piece. And it's probably also why I end up with so many scraps. <laughs> but yeah, then people can... Sometimes looking at, in a catalogue that has pictures of six or seven designs and you can see them at the bottom it's it's not very clear but if you received a card with all of the different designs on here it's uh i think it looks nice which is my other one my grid paper one. Oh, this one's great because it doesn't matter which way i cut it there's no right wrong no up and no down so plus it's pretty Talking about new papers, by the way, I opened up my paper shares this week for the um, January 2021 mini and the celebration. And I've also got ribbons and embellishment shares there as well. So if you normally take part in those shares or if you want to take part in those shares, just give me a shout and I'll send you the details. So when I'm at the centre of the card now, I'm going to pop my postage stamp in. See, that still looks a different colour. Doesn't that look a different colour? I don't know whether it does with my lights on because I know I've got, I've got lights and I'm using foil. But to me, that looks lighter than these two. But on this one, yeah, that looks lighter than these two again. How? I just... It is the same. You saw me punch it from the same sheet. <laughs> so I'm using basic grey. I told you, no... No black, no white this week. How good's that? And I'm just stamping the best wishes first. And then you can see exactly how precise I am when I come to cutting it, which basically the answer is not very precise. Let me just grab my mini guillotine. Thank you. 
and all I'm going to do is pop it under and I'm not even looking at the measurements it does make me laugh sometimes if I've done like a card and I've put a little sentiment on some people message me and say well, what was the size well this is how I do it so all I've done is measured it on here yeah, I'm happy with the distances there. This is obviously a little bit too wide, so I'm just going to chop a bit off this end and a bit off that end and just eyeball it. I'm not a, a exact. I am for big pieces and for backgrounds, but if I'm just going to be layering onto sentiments like this, I'll just keep doing little chops until I get to where I want. And emphasis on little. You can always take card off, but it's very hard to stick it back on after you've chopped too much. So the voice of experience, there you are. So it fits like that. So I'm just going to stick this on and then I'll come back to the comments. And I'm sticking this on with Tombow. And then I'm going to stick it back up on another dimension also. It just adds another layer onto the card. And I'm going to pop it directly in the middle of that punch. So you've got a little bit all the way around. Stick it onto my basic grey cardstock. And I'm going to stick it flat again. I'm not... I've already put a lot of dimension on the front, so. There we go. I've got some base cardstock somewhere. I really do. Every time I, I use very vanilla, I fall in love with it again and wish that I had been using it more. I think you can get, you can overdose a bit on Whisper White. It's so handy and you use it lots so that when you then use another colour and Whisper White isn't featured, I just think there's something magical about that. I like that. So there we go. Card number one. And card number two is using the postage punch. I'm just going to tidy up and have a look at the comments. Hi, Katrina. Hope you're okay. Oh, you did cards like this today. Great minds think alike, eh? Hey? And um, oh, Cindy, you've noticed that they're different colours when using the foils as well. Yeah, it's it's strange, isn't it? I don't know whether it's the light or, but it's from the same set. Um. Aniki, I've seen the same here. Check the DSP. The ancient city is not on the map. Oh. Oh, you were looking for you on the DSP. I found Birmingham, but it wasn't it wasn't on this DSP. There was um there was another of the DSP that wasn't foiled. It was the other side, and that had like a brownie one with the map. And yeah, I found Birmingham on that, so I was quite happy. Um, there we go. Oh, Cindy's put that the spacing of the pieces gets messy as she goes along. Yeah, sometimes it does, but if you look at mine, this here goes right to the corner, and it doesn't on this side. So obviously the spacing has gone off a little bit. But if I didn't point that out to you, I still think it looks really nice. Um, and it's kind of the same same here. But I, I, I don't mind. Put it this way. In the end, there'd have been scraps that I'd have ended up throwing away because I'd have got annoyed every time they fall out my scrap folder. So, <laughs> right. This one's using the postage stamp, which, by the way, is a lot easier to line up 
than the um, tailor tag. If you're unsure on lining up, this would be the one to go with. Um, and I saw a post as I went through about vellum, but I've lost the post, so I'm not sure who said it. And they said, what do I do with scraps of vellum? Um, I don't know who said that. Did someone not? I don't know who said it and I can't see it in the comments, but I know I, I flipped past someone saying, what do you do with scraps of vellum? I use punches for those two. In fact, I can show you. I've got the card right here. Either punches or dies. Teensy tiny ones. And this is one of the cards using the Blooming Grow set. This is the one I did it on stage, so I have it on my desk because it reminds me of that. Um, and I cut out little flowers and then I stick them onto the card as embellishments and pop dimensionals, on, uh, pop rhinestones to cover the dimensionals. And like here, I've put them as flowers. But yeah, I just either punch them out or die cut them out. This was dies. Stick them onto the card with one of our glue dots and then add a rhinestone on top to cover the glue dot and just use them for embellishments. So, no, I was picking at the tailored tag punch again. So with this one, oh yeah, I cut some extras out earlier. I wasn't sure how many I was gonna need. So I've already got one of each of those. And then I found this DSP, which I hadn't featured on the card. So I'm gonna leave that to the side and carry on with the ones I was using. And this is also the brushed card stock, but it's a it's the different colour. So that actually is a different colour. This is the light one and this was the medium one. And then there was a very dark brown. And these are really thick. I, I like these. So it's quite handy that I actually thought and had two inch strips because the postage stamp just does two inch strips. So I'm going to cut a couple of those out. You only need two. In fact, you only need two of each one. So I've already got one of each of these. So I'm just going to cut another one each and it's done. And I'll tell you what else is strange. I don't think it makes any difference, but it makes me happier. And I don't know why it makes me happier. The tailored tag punch, the long, you have to go into like that. And I would prefer... I don't know if I'm explaining this right. I'm glad that the postage stamp is this way rather than that way. And the long bit is going in. Whereas this one, the long bit's going across. And for me, when I come to punch, I don't know why, it makes me a lot happier. I don't suppose it makes any difference, but it makes me happier this way around. Does anyone else? Have any preferences I, I don't know why I don't suppose there's any difference when you actually punch them it's just that's me that's what I I like or prefer so again this is exactly the same um nine and a half centimeters by uh 13.85 centimeters which was five and three eighths of an inch by three and three quarters of an inch And I'm going to pop some dimensionals on the back. And I'm starting with the greens. I'm going to keep to the same colour scheme. But yeah, so what I, if I, I can show you better on this one, Cindy, is when I lined it up, I just popped four of these down the card. It didn't matter which ones because I wasn't actually sticking them properly. And then could see that there was a gap at the bottom. So I just kept moving up until I was happy with the placement. And then I could see that it's about, it's about three millimetres off the top. So when I come to stick it, I could get it three millimetres off the top, but I could do it dead in the middle of this thick line here. So in my head, I could visualise it a lot easier that way around. Oh, it was Niki that asked about the vellum. There we go. Yeah, that's what I do with the vellum. Oh, and an EQ 
Nikki's gone scientific on us. She said that the direction of the punch dictates how much pressure you put onto the punch. So I'm obviously happier with it that way. But, oh, that makes sense because I've never been able to rationalise why I prefer it that way. Yeah, science. And I'm just going to, again, go about halfway in the middle and just off to the side. And that means it just hangs over the edge here with a little gap in the middle. <coughs> now for this one, I could have done what I did here and put two coordinating DSPs, sorry. <coughs> um, got a little frog in my throat. I could have put two coordinating DSPs next to each other like I have on here, but because I was using paler colors, I actually wanted to separate them out. And sometimes um, you're not going to have enough of a strip left to punch two or three out. So you're going to be using different DSPs all the way through. And that's fine. So yesterday morning we took part in a team blog hop which I love. I love it when everybody wants to use the same set in a blog hop because you never ever find someone do the same thing, do you? Like 20 people looking at the same set and we all come up with something different. And I think it's so exciting to see what everyone else comes up with. I get more excited about seeing other people's projects than I do about making mine. Um, so I got it nice and early. One of the girls puts a lot of work in and she schedules all the blogs um, and does all the facilitator behind it so I always offer to to get it it goes live at seven o'clock which is a silly a silly time on a Saturday morning so um I always offer to get up with her and check that all the links are working I'd have to get up anyway if my link wasn't working so I do that and I thought to myself yesterday oh I'll start blogging blogging by the way is my like it's my worst part of being a demonstrator. I like the crafting, I like the making, and I don't mind taking photos and editing those. But um, when it actually comes to the blog, I have to force myself to sit there and type. I suppose that's what it is with creatives, really. We, we like creating, but not, not as much on the whole, whole work bit after it. So I thought, oh, I'll do my blog and schedule a few things. And I found out that... Um, I've been kicked off Pinterest and I'm in Pinterest jail and my account has been suspended. So I needed to put an appeal in to say that I'm not a robot and I am a person and I wasn't trying to spam everybody or go against any of their policies and I hadn't posted anything dodgy. So that put me in, in a really good mood yesterday morning filling that out. So unfortunately at the moment I don't have a Pinterest account. So I'm, I, I'm having a little, I am having a little sulk about that. Um, I don't know why, because I, I haven't done anything wrong. And, um, or I don't think I've done anything wrong. And I'm going to be very sorry if I have and not realised it. Um, but I mean, I, I post cards, not violent stuff. So anyway, this is, this has kind of set the tone for the whole weekend. So after I'd done that yesterday... I then wasn't really in the mood to, to start crafting. So I caught up on some work that I'd missed in the week. and Oh, watch The Crown on Netflix again, because the next series is coming out, and I can't really remember the first that well. So I caught up on that. But then this morning when I woke up, I felt terribly guilty because I hadn't done any videos or projects for my YouTube and I thought you wasted yesterday you got in a bad mood at seven o'clock and then you did nothing with your day so I came over to start crafting and um I know I've been telling you every week that I work where I craft so normally my laptop and my screen and my printer and everything is on the desk so this morning I went to move it 
And I, I don't know why. I was just in a, a little strop and I thought, I'm fed up of having to move everything so I can craft. And every week and then later on, I'll just be putting it back. So I decided to reorganise the entirety of the room. So normally, because I craft and I'm, out, I'm working in the corner of my bedroom, I decided that crafting and working is taking more time than sleeping. So I've moved the bed to the corner of my bedroom. And now I've laid out my chest of drawers to the side of me so that I can actually work at one and craft at another one. And hopefully I won't have to move stuff out of the way. Fingers crossed anyway. So my whole day today has been productively moving everything around. And then that's when I dropped the folder with the scraps in. And I hadn't designed my life for today. And this folder with all these scraps went everywhere. And I thought, that's it. My life today is getting rid of all these scraps. <laughs> that's why I said I was inspired by a bad mood <laughs> right so that's that done where are we going um Aniki it's not science my hands are sore because I've trapped nerve in my spine so a lot of pressure ouch oh that's a shame oh so it's easier for you if you've got the lower pressure punches yeah so um this is the DSP that comes with the beautiful autumn uh, stamp set in the mini catalog and it's really nice it's foiled um like a copper foil and again it, it's a very vanilla base so i'm quite excited by that uh i've not heard of anyone being kicked off interest no cindy i hadn't either and then of course because i'm me i google to see how many people it happens to and someone said oh it's very rare um to ever hear of anyone doing it and it's normally um for people that they either suspect are robots or people who post violence or try to um encourage other people to be violent or um nudity and i thought well i don't have any of that on my channel <laughs> i just i post a few cards so um that probably made me in a worse mood then because i was like well why is it picking on me so um, I submitted my appeal and it takes 14 days, I think. But I'm a little bit worried because, not worried because I don't think I've done anything wrong, but worried because I do get the majority of the traffic to my channel from Pinterest. Um, so I don't really want to lose that. Crumb cake ink pad and I've stuck it onto crumb cake cardstock. And I'm using the same stamp when I can find where I put it. There you are. It is behind the punch. Oh, yes, I think it is Gilded Autumn. Yes, I think it is Gilded Autumn. Um, and then the stamp set I used last week, which is Beautiful Autumn, has the same images on. And then this one comes in a bundle with tiny little um, punches that you can punch these out. It's that one, that one, and that one that you can punch out of. And it lines up and coordinates with the paper. So, yeah, it's, it is a lovely set. Best wishes again. And I'm because I'm going to do this with the uh, tailored punch, I'm going to over there do it sorry my memory is really bad I, I always have to check the catalogue before I do anything to double check the names do you know when I first was a demonstrator I could remember the names of all of the different products and that was only three years ago but now I get confused with all the names and I start quoting <laughs> quoting names from previous catalogues mm. um but it's all available on my website, slimandstylish.com. If you go to the header and click buy, it will take you to my store. And if you click on DSPs, it will take you to where all of the DSP is. Uh, and so what I've got here is this one here that's on this bit. And I didn't see the point of chopping a whole sentiment just to get a bit at the bottom. So instead, I lined it up in my punch. And I'm going to do it here. And I'm just going to make sure that it goes to the halfway mark. Oh, 
one way of saving the DSP that I'm trying to get rid of. And then when I line it up on there, you're not going to know that I haven't punched out a whole piece of DSP, but sometimes you're taking up an awful lot for, for hiding it. While I want to get rid of the DSP and minimise how much scrap I've got, I don't want to just cut into the beautiful paper and waste it. So I'm just going to stick that down. So because I haven't got it all the way through, I've just put Tombow on the edge. And there you are. You've got the nice, nice foil at the bottom. A couple of dimensionals because I don't feel like we've used enough. <laughs> And then just pop that one into the middle. And then I've got another very vanilla card base that I'm going to pop this one on too. Yeah, that's right, Cindy. Frustration inspired. Oh, Katrina, how have you not got that punch? The postage label punch is it it's my favorite punch i really like it and it's a really lovely size for sentiments it's it's a very good punch and silly i got it because i was getting the stamp set and i'm a big person if i'm getting the stamp set and i think i might want the punch i get it because you get 10 percent off if you buy the bundle together so it makes sense but i didn't think i would use the punch I thought I'd be using the stamp set more and just the punch occasionally. But no, love the punch. It's my favourite one now. And it's a really nice size. Most sentiments fit in that. Um, and you can still decorate around the card in it. So. Get the punch, Katrina. Oh, thanks, Karen. Yeah, I thought it's getting close to Christmas, even though it's not Christmas. So I'm going to start trialling out my Christmas metallic colours. And and see which one's my favourite for Christmas. There we go. I mean, you could pop a ribbon on them if you wanted to, but to be honest, I think they're so glittery and gleaming with the foil, you don't need to. But if you were using all scraps of DSP that weren't glittery or foiled, then yeah, feel free to pop a, a bow on as well. There you go. So, uh, can you guess what my afternoon's going to be? Because I've got all of the snowflakes, loads of strips of the Halloween, and I don't know how I've ended up with so many like bits and pieces. And then I've got the 12 tidings ready to go as well. So by this evening, hopefully I will have absolutely no scraps left. Fingers crossed. <laughs> but thank you all for joining me. It's been lovely to chat to you all as always. I will see you next week. If you have enjoyed the video, please can you give me um, a thumbs up on the way out? Audrey, I need to stop watching you live as I need to buy more punches. Yeah. Do you know, I, I do like my big shop and I like my dies and I like um, lining things up and cutting out all the patterns. But there's nothing like the quickness and easiness of just grabbing a, dart, uh, grabbing a punch and just... And like I said, it gets you out of a bad mood as I've worked out today. So thank you for joining me. If you have made the project, do head over to Slim and Stylish's Crafty Hangout. If you go to the album, you can pop in what you've made so I can see what you've done. If you want any details on the DSP shares that I'm opening up for January, let me know and I'll send it over to you when I'm including embellishments and ribbons, but all are separate options. So do ask me and I'll send you all the details and I'll see you next week. Everything I've used today is available to buy at slimandstylish.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week.